just go for it. Hey everybody, it's me, your buddy Dave, the host here of The Dark Stuff. I'm back with a really quick and really sad video today. That scream you heard right before I came on has been silenced. Uh, one of the best rock and roll screams in the history of music. Kim Shattuck, singer-songwriter, uh, leader, guitar player, front person for the band The Muffs. Uh, along with, she was also in the Pandoras, she was briefly in the Pixies, she's in a band called the Coolies, she's in a band called the Beards. She does a lot of stuff, but is primarily known for the Muffs. Um, passed away yesterday at age 56 due to complications from having ALS, or what used to be, when I was a kid, known as Lou Gehrig's disease. Which is a total shock to almost everybody because they kept that totally under lock and key, completely private, because nobody seemed to know uh, that she even had ALS, let alone that she'd been in a two-year struggle with it, as her husband posted on... Um, on Instagram the other day, which was the initial alert that it happened. I saw it uh, because Melanie Vammen, who was a one-time member of the Muffs and Pandora's and good friends with Kim, uh, posted a uh, repost or thing on Instagram and then I started Googling, you know, Kim Shattuck and nothing else had it that she had passed. And so for a little bit, I was kind of like, I don't know, should I, is this true or not? But I figured it's coming from Melanie Vammen, who's reposting something from Kim Shattuck's husband. It must be true. And then over the course of the next few hours of yesterday, um, more and more people started making it official. The Muffs official Facebook page did it, Twitter, etc. Uh, they all made official statements. You've seen a lot of artists come out of the woodwork being like, I was such a huge Muffs fan. I love Kim Shattuck. Even the Pixies, who... You know, I, I hate that there are articles out there that have Kim Shattuck's main claim to fame was that she played in the Pixies. She was in the band for about six months, and they canned her um, for unknown reasons, as she thinks kind of more enthusiasm than, than the band wanted on stage. Either way, she was barely in the Pixies. That's an asterisk. Her main thing is the muffs. To keep this video short and me able to get it done in one day so I could get it out there a lot quicker, it's going to be a little light on the production value. Uh, I'm just going to show you some of my muffs records. I don't by any means have the whole collection, but I do have uh, here this single here for New Love uh, on Sympathy for the Record Industry, Big Mouth. So probably, probably 1991 or so. Uh, then this one for Sub Pop of I Need You, Beat Your Heart Out. Both those songs came on their debut album. Here's another one for I'm a Dick. On the back, Pacer, which is a Amps cover of, from Kim Deal from the, from the Pixies, oddly enough. Um, here's White Flag. Okay, this is like a side group thing with three guys, three members of the Muffs uh, there. Uh, this is their most recent studio album, whoop de doo they're having a new one come out, ironically, on the 18th. It was supposed to be released. Uh, that's the schedule right now. I'm recording this on October 3rd, so hoping that still comes out. It was the last thing that Kim did before um, succumbing to this illness. So I'm really looking forward to hearing it because I've, I've liked everything else they've done. Here's their debut CD. You know, the one and only time I ever saw them was on their first tour. Um, back in 93 when I lived in Seattle and I saw them so with Melanie with Chris Crass the original drummer I never saw them again in their entire since since 93 and that's a, that's a regret I really have now they they played in Omaha a couple times while I wasn't living here but I just feel like I, I just kept missing them or something that was the debut album Blonder and Blonder which is sort of uniformly considered their best album. I don't really strongly disagree with that, but I'm a big fan of Happy Birthday to me. It has a little bit, it's still rocking, but it has a little bit of a subdued feel that I like, and it's a, a, a good mix of the sort of sadness and, and greatness of, of, of their music. Um, 
Here she was in the Pandoras. This is pre-Muffs. Her and Melanie. And there's Kim on the back. And um, they reformed the Pandoras a few years ago and made this record. Here's the Pandoras. With Kim being sort of the front person, because she wasn't in the original version of the band. She was just the bass player. The Muffs was her forte. For me, the great thing about the Muffs was that I felt like they were kind of a cross between Green Day and Courtney Love, like um, a great screamer. And, and, and Kim Shattuck has a better voice than Courtney Love. Courtney Love, I just use as the example because she's more well known, and she is well known for screaming. Okay, I mean, I do like Courtney Love, but nobody has a better scream than Kim Shattuck. But she also had that pop punk energy of Green Day, and the Muffs' debut album predates. Uh, Green Day Dookie, and it's also produced by the same guy, Rob Cavallo, who produced all the big Green Day records in the 90s and sort of signed them to Warner Brothers. He also signed the Muffs to Warner Brothers. So, uh, you know, I'm, uh, by the way, Billy Joe Armstrong on his uh, Instagram post said that while they were making Dookie, they were listening to this album constantly while it was being made, and they loved this, this record. I kind of felt like if the Muffs had any other name other than the Muffs, they might have been a much, much bigger band. And it sounds in 2019 like, so what? But you gotta understand the timing. In 1991, 92, 93, you lived or died by radio. Radio is a very conservative medium. Not conservative politically necessarily, though it kinda is. But I just mean more like they don't wanna take a risk of offending anybody or anybody calling in bitching about anything or any kind of complaint. And the band The Muffs, uh, was just not something that a lot of stations were going to get behind, or at least enough would have a problem with it. And I think that was really what held them back a long time. I mean, people were just like, oh, the Muffs, I don't know. So if they'd been almost anything else, I think Kim Shattuck would be, would have been this major rock star of the 90s, and you'd see a bit even bigger outpouring of emotion. I mean, right now, you know, I've, I'm on their f official Facebook page, and there's just a ton of outpouring of emotion. Everybody's really sad. Um, I never got to meet Kim, although everybody is talking about their experiences meeting her, saying she was extremely nice and really giving to fans and always willing to sit there and talk and take a picture and stuff. Not a selfie. People, a selfie is when you take a picture of yourself like this, okay? Oh, I'm taking a picture of myself. If you have someone else take it for you, it's not a selfie. It's just side note, okay. Anyways, another great artist has passed. I've been listening to her music almost nonstop for the last 24 hours since I heard the news. Um, really really bummed about this i'm going to do a little segment to her on my radio show this coming sunday if anyone wants to listen thanks a lot everybody take care bye bye